generation has a prevailing evil. For example, the generation in which we live today is predominantly lukewarm, I mean spiritually lukewarm. Jesus himself in Revelation chapter 3 said in verse 15, I know thy works, and that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wear cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spoon thee out of my mouth. It is very important to the Lord that you are either following Him, or you are not following Him. The bulk of the Christians we have today are in between. So the line between believers and non-believers is very blurry. And God wants to correct that because that is important to be corrected before Jesus returns. There has to be a significant difference between those who are serving the Lord and those who are not. And scriptures is very clear. To follow the Lord, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross. There is no other way you can follow the Lord except you deny yourself and take up your cross. This is the reason why many Christians are in between because it takes a lot of pain and a lot of sacrifice to be able to do that. But in every generation also, God always has a special group called the remnant. The scripture many times referred to them as the remnant. There are people who are selected by God and preserved in every generation. They are not overcome by the prevailing evil of the generation in which they live. God reserves them so that at the right time, He raises them and uses them to redeem and rescue as many people as possible from that generation. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, only the family of Lot was rescued from that generation. They were like a remnant and God had to bring them out of that land before the land was destroyed. When God wanted to destroy all of the world also, He reserved the family of Noah as the remnant He had taken out of that generation. In the days of Elijah, when Elijah felt he was alone, God said to him in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 18, He said, I have reserved for me 7,000 who have not bowed to bow. Those were the remnants in that generation. There's so much I'm going to be talking about with regards to the remnants in this program in the, in the following couple of weeks. But for now, i like to say that this program, Remnant Arise, is targeting only the remnant. There are many other people in the body of Christ and this ministry is sent to all of the body. But God said to me that the remnant will arise first. Many others will arise as time goes on. Because when the pressure of the war becomes more intense, you have no choice but to make up their mind to totally follow the Lord. Your work with God has to be absolute. You are either ready to take up your cross, deny yourself, die to self, and follow Him, or you decide not to. You can no more be in between. This program is specific to the remnant. I'm not trying to awaken the remnant. I'm only asking you to arise because God has already prepared you for now. I repeat, I'm not trying to prepare the remnant. God already has prepared you, but it's time for you to arise. The ministry that God has called me into is a ministry that is fighting for the unity of the body of Christ. We can no longer stand divided because all of the forces of evil have organized themselves to stand against the church of Christ and we can no longer continue the way we have been. God is trying to raise a global force that will be able to withstand every spiritual and physical power wherever in the world. The body of Christ is the most powerful group on the earth. Or rather, the body of Christ should be the most powerful group on the earth. But it's a pity that in the generation we live in, we tend to have so much members in the church, yet we are more powerless by the day. 
God wants to do something about that. Because we many times keep misrepresenting Him. God is all powerful. He is omnipotent. God is the owner of everything that is called authority. And we are supposed to carry all that God has and represent Him totally as His children. But we have failed to do that and that's something God wants to correct and He's going to start with the remnant. A remnant is a person who is loyal to the Lord. You are loyal to Christ first before you are loyal to any institution. A remnant is a person who is ready to follow the Lord wherever He leads and realize that it's always going to be a lot of pain that ends in a lot of glory. Every call of God ends in glory. There is no other ending but there has to be suffering. Not because God likes to see you suffer, but because everything that is of God is anti-flesh and fallen nature has to die. It takes a lot of pain for fallen nature to die. But the person has to be willing and submit himself to following the Lord absolutely for fallen nature to die just so you can carry the Lord and represent him fully. So all the people who are part of the remnant group, white, black, brown, or whatever your color is, your race, your tribe irrelevant, your sex irrelevant, you may be a pastor or a church member, it's irrelevant. Because I know that there are people who are part of the remnant who are clergymen and there are those who are laymen. So I'm talking to all of the remnants. In remnant arise, we will have some special episodes that are just focused on church leaders. Of course, everyone can watch it, but we'll be saying some specific things to them. Again, a remnant is a person who is willing to follow the Lord wherever he needs. You love the Lord with all that you are. You will do anything to please him. You will do anything to ensure that his will is done on the earth. God has a set out plan for the days that we live in. Let me quickly read Ephesians chapter 1. A scripture I will not want you to forget. Ephesians chapter 1. I'll read very quickly two verses. That's verse 10 and 11. Verse 10, it says that in the displeased, I'm quoting the Lord. Like I said, I'm talking to the remnant. Every remnant will hear me. Because Jesus said to me that all the remnants, or everyone who is a part of the remnant group, are his sheep. And the Bible says that his sheep hears his voice. So I'm not trying to compel the remnant. Just like I'm not trying to prepare them because already... God has prepared them. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that's in the dispensation of the last days, the last days part of the last days actually, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. Realize again that we are creatures of a mighty God and that we are not on this earth to live the way we like and do what we like. God has a plan and every remnant, every person who is a part of the remnant group is willing to walk with God to see that his plan is fulfilled on the earth. This is a unity movement. Jesus Christ himself, just before he died, at the verge of death, prayed, John 17, that we may be one just as he is one with the Father, that we also may be one in him, that the world may believe that God sent him. So, the unity of the body of Christ, the oneness of the church of Christ, is still going to be the absolute proof of the success of the cross. Many of the things I'm talking about today, I'll be explaining to you in the weeks to come so that you can understand it carefully. Now, this ministry is not sent to you just so you can listen to what we have to say and be blessed. God is raising a global force, so we're expecting you to register and become a part of the ministry so that we can walk with you and guide you as the work progresses. But I'd like to advise that you do not register until you have listened to Remnants Arise for at least four weeks. I know that there are those who register immediately because probably they know me before now. That's okay. The person who knows me before now, of course, knows what I'm about 
and what God has sent me to do. But if you are hearing me for the first time, I advise you to listen to Remnant Arise for the next four weeks before you take any step to register. It's your duty as a Remnant to test every spirit, if they be of God, before you take any step. You have to be sure that the Holy Spirit is leading you to be a part of this and that this is the place God has chosen to unite the body of Christ. Now, the unity of the body of Christ is a must. It will happen or else Christ will not return. It's central to the return of the Lord because it's central to the cross and to the atonement. John chapter 11 verse 52. Let's see that scripture. I think that, that will be the last scripture I will probably read for today. John 11 52. I'll back up a bit to 50. Now consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. At the heart of the cross, at the heart of the sacrifice of Christ, is not just salvation, but the unity of the body of Christ. And this is the reason why the sacrifice of one man is adequate for all of the world, because of God's living plan to make all of us part of one body. If it were not so, all of us would have required our individual saviors. But one man's sacrifice was adequate because everyone was going to get a part of him. And I have often said, if Jesus were shot with a gun, of course he would have died, but he would have been good enough. Because it was not just about dying, he had to die in a way whereby all of his blood would be poured out. And every part of his body would be split, just so each of us can get a part. If you study what happens to a man when he's crucified, you will find out that at some point, all of his arteries and every part of him will be split in pieces. And all his blood gushing out, actually, his blood shared. And that was crucial. If not, we will not each have a part. So there had been always the hidden plan of God to put all of the body of Christ into one. Simply because we have to become God's eternal dwelling place. This is the principal reason for the unity of the body of Christ. We have to become God's eternal dwelling place. God chose us. If you read Ephesians chapter 2, the last two verses, you'll see that if you read Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6, you'll see that in fact it's written all over scripture, God chose to make all of us together His eternal dwelling place. We cannot be His eternal dwelling place if we are scattered. There is no building that inhabits anyone if all the parts are divided. And we cannot be an exception because we are God's house. If you join this ministry, it means you are saying, I realize I'm a part of the precious Lord and I want to hold hand with every other part of his body so he can inhabit us. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. I may go to say as an apostle that after the days of us of the apostles, there has been no other unity in the body of Christ. God had the house there. The Holy Spirit did his best to ensure that the unity movement was preserved. But after that, of course, a lot of division came to the church. But now, in the days we live, we are privileged to be a generation that will be united so that the Lord can return. So the glory of this house, which is made up of all of us in this generation, who truly love the Lord, shall be greater than the glory of the acts of the apostle. The call I'm giving to you is a call to glory. Of course, there will be suffering because the kingdom of God allows violence. And Jesus himself was made perfect through suffering, just so many other sons could be raised to glory. We put our hands together, walk the path of sacrifice, and we will shine together. At the end of this clip, you will be listening to the anthem for the remnants. Remnants, arise! I say to you, with all the authority of Christ, arise! It's time to take your place in glory. And again, please, if you're hearing me for the first time, if you're seeing me for the first time, follow this program for at least four weeks before you take any step to register, before you take any step to put hands on the cross. I'll close by saying this. The internet body of Christ is a must, but it will only happen on the platform ordained by God 
we call the foundation of the world. Many people have tried to unite the body of Christ. Many associations have risen to do that. But only on the platform God chose before the foundation of, of the world will the unity of the body of Christ happen. And that's your duty to confirm as a remnant if this is the place. The Holy Spirit says to you, yes, then register, become a part of this ministry, and we'll carry you along as the battle rages. And you are thinking, why should the man kiss you? Because many wise after the flesh are not called. Many strong after the flesh are not called. Only the despised and people who are like me. God chooses so that no flesh will glory in His presence. I never forget this. I know that this is the only reason why I was called. Please check our website, which of course is on your screen right now, and fill in the remnant membership form. Only those who are loyal to the Lord will fill the form because they are ready. Again, I'm not trying to get you ready because you are ready. God has been talking to you. And some of you know me already. I've met a couple people who, when they meet me, say, We know you because we have seen you before. And I know that there are many others like that. I know you are ready. You love the Lord. Your heart is blown out to Him. You want to please Him with all that you are. You want to be a part of His body. Of course, you are a part of His body already, but you want to hold hands with all of the others and go through whatever it takes for that to happen. In the next four weeks, I will explain to you properly the unity of the body of Christ and the sickle. The only way the body of Christ can be united is just one way, and it's only the Holy Spirit who can do the work. I will explain all of that to you, and that's what I've said. Please, if you are hearing me for the first time, do not register except you are listening to this program for the next four weeks. But you can go ahead and register if the Holy Spirit is so strong on you and you are convinced. I just want you to be safe because that's what you should do as a child of God. Be led by the Spirit. Only those who are led by the Spirit are true sons of God. And the time for the manifestation of the sons of God is now. The dividing line is being put in the body of Christ. Those who are hot and those who are cold will be separated so that God can fill his house with glory and all the world can know that God sent Christ. And that Calvary is a success. God bless you. Jesus precious name.